Good afternoon and welcome to the Modex Consulting presentation on sales prices in Business Central. I'm Brian Roberts, a implementation consultant with the Modex, and we're going to take a look at sales prices, specifically item prices, customer specific prices, a price list report you can send to your customers, and doing some automatic updates of sales pricing. Uh, I'm not going to try and cover every single option available for discounts and so on. Uh, for example, we're not going to discuss payment terms of this, uh, in this uh, quick presentation, but just wanted to give you sort of an overview of common sales price scenarios in Business Central. So we are looking at the uh, Business Central screen. If you're not familiar with Business Central, I'm uh, in the sales processor uh, role center. Uh, so we have quick access to customers, items, things like that, as well as creating sales orders. So first of all, on items in Business Central, there is a spot to put in a unit price. This is a global price that applies to all customers. This is quick and simple, and if this meets your needs, great, you're done. Um, I have just manually typed in this price right here. It is also possible to set up so your price is calculated uh, based on your cost plus profit margin, uh, but we're just going to take a look at some manually typed in prices today. So this global price is great if all your customers pay the same price. However, it's more common for you to be negotiating with customers than setting up individual prices for them. This is the special prices section, and I'm just going to create a new one right here. So in this case, this is going to be a customer specific price. I am choosing the customer here, and I am specifying that they only pay $255. And the dates here I'm typing in are actually optional, um, but I'm setting up for some discussion of automatic uh, price uh, uh, recalculations every six months, for example, in the future. Um, I could continue with this. I could specify other prices for this uh, specific item by choosing different customers and so on and I could continue entering things here. Um, I happen to have started from the item card, and this is probably the right way to do it if you're setting prices for a new item. However, it's more likely that you would actually be starting with a customer. You just finished talking to them, and you want to uh, set in some new prices based on those negotiations. So on the customer card, you can also access the exact same pricing information. So we've come into a screen. We are looking at exactly the same data. It doesn't matter if you enter it here through the item card or the customer card, it's going to result in the same place and have the same effect in the end. So in this case, my $255 that I typed in earlier exists there. So we certainly can get more complex in this screen if you need to. Maybe, for example, we need to set up a scenario where if the customer buys more than a dozen, that is the minimum quantity here is more than 12, 12 or higher to be precise. They only pay $243. And I'm gonna put in the same dates again, just for later discussion. So this gives you various ways of putting in quantity discounts, volume discounts, that kind of thing. Um, there's some other options here that might be useful for you. Uh, for example, instead of going by customer, you can set up price groups for uh, multiple customers. Perhaps you've got a retail and wholesale groups with different price lists and so on. Um, we can talk about things like units of measure. Maybe if they buy the large case, it's cheaper than buying a dozen individually. Whatever the scenario is here, and this starts to depend on the details of your item setup and uh, things like packaging and so on. So I'm just going to throw in another item here just so we've got some stuff to talk about. So I could continue doing this. Um, I'm typing in the prices manually here. This could also be imported, and I'll show you a couple other ways to update this automatically uh, later in this presentation. So now we've set up those prices. These kick in automatically. If we go create a sales order from the customer, I'm going to pick the trade research customer I was using. We come in here and pick the item and so on. And we have that 255 I typed in. If I type in a large quantity, they want to buy 32 of them. 
as soon as I tab off that, we are going to see that price change. And uh, there's various uh, sort of automatic updates that will occur as you adjust quantities and so on. If you want to see the details of what is available, sales prices show we've set up two prices for the customers. You could dig in here if you didn't want to uh, take a look or during on the call with the customer, you wanted to say, oh yes, buy 12, we give you a better discount, things like that. So I could continue entering this sales order and it would go through all the pricing rules that we have set up um, would certainly be there. So you may have a situation where you need to actually send the customer their price list. And there is the list price sheet. Here's here. This is a report designed for sending to the customer, showing all the prices that you have set up for them. In this case, I've already run it for this particular customer. I'm just going to do a quick preview here. There's additional filters down below for groups of items or something like that, if that would be more appropriate for your situation. So this particular item I set up the prices for, there's a 255 I typed in. If they buy 12, there's their discount and so on. Notice that this top line here, this item, I did not set up a special price for this customer. So it's not one of the items I set up. So it has gone back to the item card and grabbed the specific item price that all customers pay. So you don't need to give the customer two lists or anything like that. It goes and looks up the best price that this customer can get and displays in this report. So you can just give this directly to them. So one of the things that uh, I did here was I set up in this customer, I set up some pricing that is based on dates and I specifically set it up so it's going to expire next week. Assuming that you re-update your prices on some regular basis, uh, Business Central gives you some tools to automatically update prices. Um, there's ver uh, three main ways to update prices. I mean, you could just type them in, you could dump this out to a spreadsheet if you've got some spreadsheet that you're sending back to the customer as you negotiate, or there is a process for doing an automatic update if that works best for your business. This worksheet lets you suggest new prices, review them, and then implement them. So this could be used in advance. We have suggest item prices, which would be the item specific prices that apply to all customers. We could do sales prices. This is the customer specific one. And I'm just going to um, run through this. Basically, I've gone in and said, I want new prices to start effect uh, 1st of July, running through this customer. I have chosen an adjustment factor of 1.02. That's a 2% increase. So our policy has been we're going to do that increase. If my prices went down to the pennies, um, doing a 2% increase might give me fractions of a penny. So I've specified that my rounding will be to the nearest penny. Uh, you certainly can do rounding to other methods if you want. This is pulled in the prices that I set up for these items in advance. There's our current price. And this column here is the new price. Notice the price has jumped slightly. This is our 2% increase rounded off to the nearest penny. I could change this. So it should be 126. I could type in numbers. I could review this and so on. Eventually, I'm happy with it and go implement this change. And going back to the customer, Let me try that again, click on the right spot. So now we have groups of prices. We have prices that started on the 1st of January, ran until June 30th, and then we have some new prices that come in uh, starting uh, 1st of July. Doing the pricing with the dates like this has the advantage that you do not need to do a rush update on July 1st. You can set this up in advance. I've done it, uh, happens to be a few days in advance, but if your negotiations are a long time in advance, this is easy to sort of set up and forget about. Your first sales order that you enter on the 1st of July will take the new prices, no manual changes review, no post-it notes required, and so on.
So I've taken a look at sort of the item prices, customer prices. We've talked about some things like volume discounts and doing automatic updates. There is a couple of options here that I'm not going to cover in a huge amount of detail. We've been looking at prices. And specifically with prices, we've been saying they get a price and there's possible discounts and so on. However, I've typed in the new price as a specific amount. It's also possible to set up discounts as a specific percentage. This would be more appropriate if your price fluctuated. Perhaps you've got a commodity item, but your agreement with the customer is based on no matter what our weekly pricing is, we're going to give you a 3% discount. There also is invoice discounts. This is appropriate if it's a situation of order more than $1,000, we'll give you 5% off, that sort of scenario. Uh, I'm not going to go through a lot of setup there, but just taking a look at the sales orders, I just want to point out where this comes in so you can uh, use this if you are, uh, if this is applies to your business. So on this specific sales order, notice there's a line discount here. Uh, we could manually type stuff in here, but the uh, discount screen that we looked at would let this be automatically calculated. Uh, so typically you would use one or the other, either the prices with volume discounts or um, setting up an actual line discount with a percentage to base, based on how stable your prices are and your agreement with your customer. So that's sort of an overview of the uh, pricing, sales pricing side of Business Central. We've taken a look at some of the pricing options uh, in uh, actual uh, put them in and I've mentioned a couple of other things that can be used if they're more applicable to your business. If you do have questions that are specific to your business and you'd like to know uh, if, how Business Central would support them, please reach out to Modax Consulting and we'd be happy to assist you. Thanks again for your time.